Welcome to the latest edition of Don't Take This as Gospel. I'm Mike Partika, and this is episode 47, Urban Babylon, Rural Righteousness. Now, we are covering the book, Dennis Prager's The Rational Bible, Genesis, God, Creation, and Destruction. And chapter 11 of Genesis covers the story of the Tower of Babel. Now, the Tower of Babel story I covered in the last video and generally speaking, it's a story of how the post-flood inhabitants of the earth, who were all gathered together in one particular area, decided we're not going to spread out all over the earth. We're going to build a city right here, and the city is going to create have this enormous tower that's going to reach all the way up to the heavens. So when God found out that they were defying his plan to spread them out all throughout the earth, uh, God decided to thwart their scheme by mixing up their language. And so when they were previously all speaking one language, now they were speaking about 70 different languages, and they all grouped together by language and settled in their own countries all throughout the world, and that's how you know people and civilization spread out and how languages developed. It was a supernatural explanation for the birth of multiple languages, which because we now understand how language can change over time, and this is something that I covered in the last video, that we didn't really need a supernatural explanation for that, but because the ancients didn't have uh, access to all of the writings and things that could uh, serve a linguistic analysis the way that we have that information gathered today, they came up with a supernatural explanation for it. So the point of this video, though, is to uh, deal with some commentary in Dennis Prager's book, Genesis, God, Creation, and Destruction. This is book two in his Rational Bible series, book one being Exodus, which he did first because it contains the Ten Commandments, even though it's the second book of the Bible, whereas Genesis is the first book of the Bible. And what Dennis Prager says is that the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible, presents the story of Babel as a warning against cities. And drawing on some sources, Rabbi Gunther Plaut, born 1912 and died 2012, author of the Torah, a modern commentary, notes it is the building of the city of Babel, not the tower, that is the primary sin. Likewise, Robert Alter, a professor of Hebrew and comparative literature at Berkeley, writes, the polemic thrust of the story of Babel, and this is one of the points that I uh, made in the prior video is that some of these early stories in Genesis are polemics. They're not just describing things, they're also trying to put a moral spin on things. Uh, the polemic thrust of the story of Babel is against urbanism. Now Dennis Prager continues, of course, cities have enriched civilizations culturally, artistically, scientifically, and medically, but morally Given their role as incubators of bad ideas and the anonymity they afford, which gives people cover to act badly, cities are a problem. And nearly all of the terrible ideas of the modern period were thought up by people dwelling in cities. You had Karl Marx, who developed Marxism and class warfare and, and things like that. He's very anti-capitalist. He lived and developed his theories in London. Hitler, of course, you know, the, the actual Hitler, not any of the many Hitlers that the left would like to pretend the right are, uh, developed his ideas in Vienna, Austria. And Vladimir Lenin, who uh, implemented communism in the Soviet Union, uh, developed his ideas in a host of European cities. It is not surprising that so many of Israel's great prophets, including Moses, the greatest prophet in uh, Judaism, were shepherds, the most rural of folk. Now, I have to give Dennis Prager credit here because there is a very obvious deviation into politics that he could have made on this particular point, and he does not go that direction in his book, The Rational Bible, Genesis, God, Creation, and Destruction. I have to hand that to him. It was a very, very moral high ground type thing to do to not drag this in a political correct uh, direction. I myself, on the other hand, have no such scruples. So let's take a look at how rural versus urban affects politics. Now remember, the argument has just been made that when you group a whole bunch of people together in cities, they get up to no good. 
That's kind of the general thrust of the uh, anti-urban argument of the Bible. You get a whole bunch of uh, people together in a city doing their, their thing and uh, being able to come up with plans and schemes and such, you can get uh, immorality pretty darn quick from that. And so what we have here is a U.S. population density map by counties, and the redder the area, the more population there is, and that's ba those are basically the urban areas. Those are the areas where you have enormously big cities. Now, I myself am a Texas resident, so for example, you've got um, uh, like this splotch over here representing Dallas and Fort Worth. You've got a couple of splotches down here. I believe one of those is Austin. Then you've got, of course, the big urban splotches where, where you have around uh, New, uh, here you have New York City and you've got the New Jersey area and some of the East Coast stuff. You've got the Los Angeles and San Francisco areas and you've got Seattle and I believe that's Portland. And you've got these dots of urban area and then the yellow areas and the, and the very faded areas, the more yellow you get on the spectrum, those are the rural areas. And those are the areas where you would expect the, the righteousness to be, according to uh, Dennis Prager's argument that uh, the, the most righteous people in the Bible came from rural environments and were shepherds, which was an extraordinarily rural job. Well, how does this compare to political party affiliation and, and how these areas vote? Well, if you look at it traditionally where Republican areas are more red and Democrat areas are more blue, will you look at how that lines up? You've got almost a overlap of the blue areas, the Democrat areas, with the high density population areas in the United States. So the most urban centers in American life also appear to be the most Democrat in American life, whereas the more rural these areas are, you have more red shading. So what do you think that says about, you know, the, the biblical view of the morality of the respective parties on a rural versus urban basis. Well, I don't want to have to spell it out for you, so I'll just leave the picture up here and let you draw your own conclusions. So um, anyway, that is my commentary on the commentary. That commentary being Dennis Prager's book, The Rational Bible, Genesis, God, Creation, and Destruction. If you're interested in picking up a copy of this book, please do at the uh, link in the video description. It's an affiliate link. I'll get a little bit of a kickback from that. I'm not ashamed to say it. And uh, that is my presentation for today. Thank you for watching. Don't take this as gospel. I'm Mike Partika, and please do subscribe so that you get notified of the next Don't Take This as Gospel video or any of my other content that may come out from time to time. And uh, I will talk to you later.